Okay, so we're going to start this impeller drawing. To start it, you're going to start with a circle on your screen. Make that circle a diameter 2. Then make another circle that has the same center point. And my other snap's not on, so let me do that. That has the same center point with a diameter of 10. Then now next, what you're going to do? You're going to use the rectangle command. You're going to draw a rectangle from that quadrant out here to this quadrant and straight down. And I'll make this about 0.1 thick. Nothing exact, but about 0.1. Now, I did that pretty quickly. To do the rectangle command, you're going to go REC. It's not one we've used often. Um, and I want to make another rectangle on top of this one. I'm going to make it from that point. And I want to go right into the about this position here. Uh, when I say about that position, the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to go to the nearest point. I'm going to go NEA and click right there. and It's going to lock into that nearest point. That made me a rectangle that's exactly the same width as my previous rectangle and kind of at this random length. Once again, I'm going to repeat a third rectangle. So a rectangle, I'm going to make it from that end point there and make it to the nearest point right again about there. Last but not least, one more rectangle there and I'm going to go to the nearest point and again about right there. <clears throat> so it's got me four rectangles in place there. All right, now, with those rectangles, I'm going to use Rotate. I'm going to rotate this second largest rectangle from that corner. And again, nothing exact, but down to about there. I'm going to rotate this next rectangle. Um, I'm going to pick my base point. Come on. Try this again. Rectang or rotate, sorry, from that corner. And that one down to about there. And last but not least, I'm going to rotate that one from that base point now to about there. <clears throat> so I've got those rectangles rotated there. Now I'm going to twist this up in 3D a little bit. And I'm going to move the second. No, actually I'm not. I'm going to move the shortest rectangle, that smallest one. I'm going to move it straight up. I want to go straight up on my positive Z, but I can't do that without my polar or my ortho on. So I'm going to turn my polar on. I'm going to go up. That's in my 90 degree back. I don't want that. I'm going to go straight up in positive Z, 8 inches. So that put that one way up there. And then these other two cross sections, I'm going to move them up somewhere in between. So sure, that one in the positive Z about there. And this one in the positive Z, oh sure, about there. So there, I've got those moved into place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use loft. I'm going to loft between those three rectangles, or sorry, four rectangles. And that gives me my little um, blade of my impeller. <clears throat> so that gives me one blade. And then I'm going to array that one. And I'm going to do a polar array. I'm going to pick that center point. Uh, I'm just going to go 12. Nice round number for me to there. <clears throat> so I've got that thing in there. Now what I want you to do is I want you to look and compare this thing to the impeller that's on page 718 in your book. Now I'm going to pause the video for a second and do a couple more tidbits to this drawing and come back. Okay, so I went ahead and I added the center cylinder and this base cylinder subtracted the hole out of the middle. Now what I want you to do is I want you to critically look at this one in comparison to the one in your book. So first, looking at this one in comparison to the book, the individual impeller blade itself, wow, mine's really fat up here towards the top. Um, if you look at the one in the book, it goes from one thickness to the bottom and then tapers to a really smooth thickness at the top to basically down to nothing. Mine are a little bit wide still on the top of it, and, and just aren't the right shape at all. So I'd want to change my cross sections um, to where it's thinner on the top by moving this larger cross section down and maybe making that larger cross section smaller to do that. Next, I'm on these. Again, if I look at this kind of critically for the book, my impeller starts here and goes to the left, curves, and then comes back to the right. If you look at the one in the book, it starts here, goes to the right, and then goes basically straight up after that. And that's not what my impeller does. So again, I'm going to have to change the rotation of those impeller or cross sections a little bit to change that on the impeller. <clears throat> Next, I'm going up here at the top. This part of my impeller sticks inside of the impeller. I don't want that. So that needs to be taken out of there. The cylinder needs to be made a little bit different to make that happen. Um, again, I mentioned this before. The top of this impeller is a little bit narrow, so or a little bit wide here. It needs to be narrower there at the top. Overall height of it, I really think my impeller is a little bit short. So that top cross section that I put up at 8 tall, I maybe need to move that up a little bit taller so it's not 8 tall. 
So this really doesn't look like that great of an example of this. Um, what I do need to do on this is, is I need to change the color of these things. So right now, notice this is all one array. I need to explode this apart and break that apart into individual um, solids. Now be careful here, if you explode this again, you explode that apart and these are now all wireframes. You don't want that. So you just want to explode it once so these are still solids. And then you can change the colors of those you know, to some other color on that blade and sure that blade so on and so forth that change the color of those so again what you're doing here is you're trying to make this match the book more closely by kind of critically looking at it and see how it does not match the one in the book um i do have one finished here somewhere let me see right there's one this one here looks very similar to the one in the book i kind of did it a nice little rainbow color you do not need to do that i just did that multicolored is the way it needs to be um, on these remember the three things Always needs to be an isometric view. One. Two. Needs to be multicolored. Three. Needs to be a solid. Um, and four. Usually the um, thing needs to be um, union together. On this, however, I would probably keep those impeller blades separate. Um, I union this part. Or I guess I would union this part. The bottom cylinder. And that inside cylinder. Union that into one, maybe. But I don't mind leaving the impeller blades separate. Um, so you can change the colors of those later if you'd like to. So there's that. Um, upload this to student view and save this in your practice folder as um, impeller. All right, carry on.